40 Frankenstein with Lifting Arms Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be showing you a four-dimensional Frankenstein whose arms lift up so he's like, uh, like that. But in this, not only does he have these arms that lift up, but he's also just very cartoony and just kind of fun and so you can do a lot with this. Um, you can also use the same technique to create other Halloween type characters and type designs. I know about a year ago for last Halloween I made a zombie that did that, one of my absolute favorite nails of last year, so I thought I would do a Frankenstein and I know that when I did the zombie last year so many people asked if I would do a Frankenstein or a mummy or you know something else doing that same technique. So I decided I would definitely have to come back. So here's Frank. I hope you guys like him and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future Halloween designs as well. So I started out and I have a layer of white acrylic over my nail. Sorry I missed showing you guys that, but just a layer of white acrylic over the nail. Nothing nothing too crazy. And then I'm going to be encasing the nail with a layer of clear acrylic. So this is just to make sure that this is going to be really super strong, especially since this nail is crazy long. So I want to make sure that it's not just going to break on me. So then after I have that and it's nice and set, I'm going to file it into shape and I'm first using a, it's a really coarse bit. And then I'm going to switch to a much smoother bit that's going to refine just the texture of the tip. And then I'm just going to be filing it into shape, making sure that it's nice and smooth. Then I'm going to cut a piece of a stir stick style straw, so a little cocktail straw, that is going to be the width I want for my Frank for his shoulders. Then I'm going to cut the straw in half, so cut off just a little bit of it, and then hold that in place. Make sure it's the right width and make sure it looks right. Then take some glue and then glue it down. So hold it while it's being, while the glue is setting. Then after that's glued in place where you want his shoulders to be, just take some clear acrylic and sort of secure it. I don't fully trust nail glue. I don't like nail glue. I avoid nail glue. So I'm just going to add some clear acrylic just to make sure. Plus that's going to give it a really nice base once you start sculpting up and over the top of this because this isn't really even going to show in the end. It just is there as a little acrylic preventer because you need a piece of wire to go all the way through his shoulders. So you need that little bit of a spacer for it. So just make sure that your spacer is fully attached to your nail just with some clear acrylic. So now I'm going to be sculpting out the shirt that is inside of his jacket. So you kind of have to sculpt him from the inside out. So I'm going to sculpt the farthest thing back, which is going to be, like I said, that shirt. And you can do whatever colors you want. I just kind of picked some colors that I thought went together. And I like, um, I went with the pale yellow and then I'm going to take a berry color and I'm going to be sculpting his pants. I picked a whole bunch of colors. I didn't want him to all be just like one shade of purple for his clothing. I wanted him to have all kinds of colors. So I took that burgundy color for his pants. So I'm just going to sculpt the shape, the trapezoid for his pants, and then sort of split it down the center for the two legs. Just like that. Any details, like the details of the wrinkles at the knees, that I added with paint later. So I just kept that pretty simple. So now I'm going to be sculpting his jacket. And his jacket goes over the top of his pants, over the, um, the waistband a little bit. So you're just going to want to carry that dark purple down. Now for me, I always think of Frankenstein either having like a charcoal or a black jacket or a purple jacket. So I made sure I gave him a purple jacket because to me that's so much more fun than giving him a black jacket. So he's got a dark purple coat that, like I said, the little point of it kind of goes over his pants a little bit. And then with this, you're going to want to take that up and over the top of that cocktail straw. So go up and over, but don't fill in the hole of the cocktail straw. Leave that open because like I said, you're going to have to have that piece of wire that goes through there. So you need to keep that open. So once you have one side of his coat done, go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. Same thing, make sure that you're using a purple acrylic that's really opaque and it's not gonna show any of the color of your cocktail straw through it. I know some of my acrylics cover things amazingly and they're such a nice, deep, intense color and some things it just is like, eh, different brands, you know? So make sure you're using one that's gonna cover the cocktail straw unless your cocktail straw is the same color as your acrylic. In that case, you're okay. If you happen to have one that's purple or if you even have one that's white, then you're not, you don't really have to worry. For me though, I have to worry. So I added a little bit of purple sort of on the underside going, still leaving the hole open, but adding a little bit of the color so that it doesn't look so, so open. So just add a little bit of purple, but don't completely block your hole and make sure that you leave plenty of space for your wire to fit through. So now I'm going to be adding just little tiny pockets with more of that purple acrylic, basically just a little thickness on where the pockets would go the hip pockets would be. So it's just a little bit. It's nothing too detailed there. Same thing. More of that detail comes with paint later on. So this is, that's it for his coat, but now I'm going to be adding his head with bright green. So his head for me, when I, I looked through so many Frankenstein photos to get inspiration for this guy, and I loved the ones where he had that really haunched over shape and his head, what, he had no neck and his head just leaned forward. So that's what I wanted to do. That's why I didn't give him any sort of neck and that's why I left that little gap in the 
um, where the straw wasn't covered because I knew I was gonna be covering it up with his head. So I had his head over the top like that. Um, when you have that little bit of acrylic there that's still wet, make sure that you press in the tip of your brush for the eye sockets and then add a little bit more acrylic for his nose to really bring that up. I want him to have a big nose. Like I said, cartoony, cute. Poke in the tip of your brush for his nostrils and give him a little wrinkle on the top of his nose. And then I'm going to be adding a little bit more of acrylic for the thickness of his eyebrows. Just to kind of thicken up his brow bone. He's got a very primitive appearance, so you want very thick brow bone, very kind of square head that all of that sort of thing and then I also added a little bit of acrylic for his lip like he's pouting like he's got his bottom lip stuck out just like that so just one lip that's sticking out like he's kind of cranky that he's in this Frankenstein like predicament and I had a little bit more acrylic to his brow bone like I said very primitive and then I decided his head wasn't quite square enough and he didn't have quite enough forehead so I had a little bit more forehead to him with more of that green acrylic and then I'm going to take and I'm going to be doing the black details on him so I'm going to take black for his hair just put a little bit a little thin line of acrylic up at the top and then sort of pull it down over his forehead I had a more finer details to that with paint later on but I want to have that base on there with the acrylic first and then add his shoes with black his shoes are very simple just add the basically a little oval with the black acrylic and then after you have that on there you can take and create a little line for the bottom of the sole doesn't take too much just make sure his shoes don't morph into one piece you want to make sure that they do stay separate so grab a piece of fairly sturdy wire that but you can bend it and make sure it's nice and straight and then string that through his armholes make sure that your acrylic is fully set though at this point and nothing's going to break then pull your wire down so that it bends and it bends to where his arms are gonna be the right width just like that and then cut them off cut off the pieces of wire to the length that you want his arms to be then take more of your purple acrylic, the same color that is for his coat, and then sculpt the sleeves of his jacket that are going to go down that piece of wire. So I set a nail form backing underneath the wire and just holding it in place while I'm sculpting this. Now this is only going to sculpt it on the front end or the front front side of the wire. So after you have that part sculpted, you're going to have to take off and it sets. Take off the nail form backing and then add acrylic to the back side. But I'll do that in just a moment. So just make sure that your sleeve covers covers the wire and another wire shows through that's another reason to make sure that you're using acrylic that's nice and opaque and then add his little hand on the end of it his hand I kept same thing primitive and I didn't give him five fingers I gave him four fingers so or a thumb and three fingers so there's his thumb and then I'm just gonna be adding his little fingers very basic things here Let's just add little tiny indents for the um, definition between the fingers just like that and let that dry let that set Add a little bit more acrylic if you need to. You know, just kind of, you have to kind of hold it in place until it's done, which is a little bit of the annoying part with this design is, I don't know, there's a lot of steps with it, but that's just because it's, it has all the, all the details on it. So then add the little bit of the cuff on him, on his sleeve, you know, keep adding details. After you can take that nail form backing off, you can take, take it off and lift his arms up so that you can look at the underside and add the acrylic to the underside of it to cover the wire and just to make it more round and more you know more realistic so add the acrylic to his hand and to his sleeve just like that and then you can go ahead and you can i just there was a little bit of a gap near his shoulder that i wanted to fill in so i put the nail form backing back underneath there and i'm just going to be adding a little bit more acrylic just to kind of fill that in you need to make sure that you're not going to be attaching this arm to his body so you need to have a gap there needs to be a little tiny microscopic gap but try to keep it as small as you possibly can once you have both arms done i figured you only really need to see me watch one make one only need to watch me make one there you go then I'm just going to take some green paint and I'm going to be adding a little bit of a shadowing on his face. So just a little bit on his uh, chin and on his eye sockets on his forehead. And then with the Luda white paint, I'm going to be highlighting. I did a little highlighting on his brow bone, but then I'm going to highlight his pants, his shoes, his jacket, everything else. And then with full strength white, I'm going to be adding in his eyes. And then switching over to black paint, I'm going to be doing all the rest of the details. So he's Frankenstein, so you got to make sure you give him that nice grouchy looking brow bone add a little bit of outlining on his nose fill in his nostrils outline that pouty lip add outlines here and there like i said before he's a cartoony so i wanted to make sure that he did kind of keep with that cartoon element so i did a little bit more outlining than i might normally you also need to make sure that you add his scar going down his forehead outline under his eyes and add his pupils too with that little bit of black paint teeny tiny little pupils and then go through and do the outlining on the rest of him as i said did more outlining than I might normally just to kind of keep with that kind of I don't know cartoon fun feel he's Frankenstein but he's still 
Yeah, he's still fun. So then I'm adding the details to his pants. Like I said, I added some wrinkles over his knees. That's really going to add quite a bit. It doesn't take much, just a couple little lines over where his knees would be. That's going to make his pants look like they have so much more dimension and so much more movement. And then add the lines on his hands, separate out those fingers, even though they aren't quite enough. Add little black fingernails. That's such a fun detail. I love adding fingernails to things. And then I'm going to be giving him his neck bolts with white paint and then adding the details with black paint. You could sculpt these with silver as well, but I figured it would just kind of be easier to see if they were just painted on with white and black. They'd be a little bit a little bit easier to see. So then I'm going to be adding a layer of gel sealer over the background, over that white background, and then I'm going to be doing matte top coat over Frank. The reason I went with a white background is just because I knew there'd be so much I didn't want to distract away from Frankenstein, so I wanted to keep the nail itself very simple. And with black hair and everything, he'd show up pretty good on white. So that is it. Like I said, I absolutely love this Frankenstein, and I will put a link to my three or my 4D zombie with the lifting arms in the description box below and any other future lifting arm creatures, if there are any. I'm not making any promises, but there might be. So check there if you're interested, and please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to see them, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!